Hi Dixons, I'm Mark Miller, Head of Bradford Research School. I'm here today at Dixons Manningham Academy. Thanks for watching this video. Please do subscribe to our platform at www.dixonsos.com. In our first video looking at the evidence, we outlined some suggestions from Professor Rob Cole as to why retrieval practice might fail to work as the research says it should. And this is the first of three videos which explores how we might respond to those challenges. As a trust that values the role of evidence, we know that we must always hold our practice up to scrutiny. And just because we're confident in the evidence supporting retrieval practice, doesn't mean that we should be unaware of the likely pitfalls, such as those outlined by Professor Cole in a blog for the EEF. He said that, teachers might generate retrieval questions that focus solely on factual recall, these questions are easy to generate, rather than requiring any higher order thinking. Questions might be too easy and boost confidence without providing real challenge, which is likely to be a key ingredient for generating the kind of learning hoped for. And teachers might allocate too much time to the quizzes, effectively losing the time they need to cover new material. Let's look at the first challenge. How do we generate more higher order thinking? It is important to start by saying the vast majority of the evidence in this area focuses on factual recall. Examples of this include times tables and vocabulary learning. And however we conceive of that notion of higher order thinking, knowledge is a prerequisite. So factual knowledge is necessary, but not sufficient for success. For example, a pupil who may be able to recall quotations from Romeo and Juliet might still struggle to use them in an essay. And a good question to ask is, how will this knowledge transfer into the context in which it is used? Without careful thought, the transfer may not happen. This is one way to consider higher order thinking, the ability to transfer the knowledge into the final context, often an exam. We can also see higher order thinking in terms of schema development, how pupils build their knowledge and connections between the knowledge into a rich understanding of the domain. Agawal 2019 writes, if we want to reach the top of Bloom's taxonomy, Building a foundation of knowledge via fact-based retrieval practice may be less potent than engaging in higher order retrieval practice at the outset. And the evidence would suggest that a mixture of factual retrieval with higher order retrieval is best. A simple switch to our mindset around retrieval is to move from simple retrieval to what we might call retrieve and, or retrieve then. Retrieve and elaborate, retrieve and connect, retrieve then, apply. When we elaborate on material, we connect it to other knowledge. Elaborative interrogation, simply asking how and why, is a good way of doing this. Imagine a pupil correctly recalls the fact that the skeleton keeps the body upright and provides a framework for muscle attachment. We can ask, how does the skeleton keep the body upright? Why does the skeleton keep the body upright? How do muscles attach to the skeleton? Why do muscles attach to the skeleton? Not only does this make the material stick, but it also helps to build those connections and links that form part of the well-organized schema. And this makes it more likely that there will be a transfer to the context in which the knowledge will be used. And it's also useful to identify gaps and misconceptions. There are many general approaches to elaboration that can help move beyond simple factual retrieval. How does X relate to Y? What else do I know about this? What else do I know that can relate to this? How do we know this? And every time we elaborate in this way, we build or strengthen schemas. There are also simple language tweaks we can use to facilitate elaboration and further thinking. The because but so technique used in the writing revolution is one way we've adapted this in some of our schools. Look at these items on a knowledge organizer. A typical retrieval task might begin with the definitions and ask pupils to recall the term. With a tiny change, we prompt deeper thinking. A window would be described as blank because. A window is transparent, but a blank is opaque. A blank is waterproof, so. These are still retrieval, but the small adjustment allows for deeper thinking. Retrieve and. These are just some of the simple adjustments we might make to help promote that higher order thinking. There are many more. And it's also worth remembering that retrieval happens in all sorts of contexts. It won't always be in a do now or in a morning meeting. 
And in many of these contexts, such as writing an exam answer, retrieval is being combined with higher order thinking in any case. As we design our curriculum and curate the knowledge that we want our pupils to know, we need to be thinking about the application of that knowledge. If we have lists of knowledge that cannot be elaborated upon or connected, there's an argument that it's not particularly useful knowledge at all. So we should always think with the end in mind. In the next video, I'll explore the second challenge. How difficult should retrieval be?